Hey everyone, in this video we're going to examine some of the reasons that spontaneous reactions don't always happen on their own. So spontaneous reactions are those that are supposed to happen on their own without any outside intervention. And yet, lots of reactions that are spontaneous don't actually happen on their own at all. These are things like a match burning or a piece of paper lighting on fire. All spontaneous reactions and yet they're definitely not happening on their own. To understand this we have to jump back to another prior topic from this AP Chemistry course and that is kinetics. So the thermodynamics of a reaction really just tells you if the reaction can theoretically happen on its own, while kinetics can control this and prevent that same reaction from actually happening in real life. To understand this more fully, let's take a look at an example. This reaction shows the conversion of carbon in the form of diamond into carbon in the form of graphite. This process has a delta G value of negative 3, meaning it releases free energy, meaning it should be spontaneous. And yet, we know that this is a process that definitely does not happen on its own. If it did, all the diamonds in the world would have already converted into graphite and we probably wouldn't have any diamonds at all. So there must be something going on here that stops this spontaneous reaction from actually happening in real life. You might remember that diamond is a covalent network solid. It's made of carbon atoms all covalently bonded together and those covalent bonds are extremely strong. This means that to actually get the reaction to start requires an incredibly high activation energy. So even though in theory it would be spontaneous, the activation energy is so high that it never actually gets going in the first place. We can see this difference represented graphically in what's called a reaction coordinate diagram. You'll notice that the products here in this final position have less energy than the reactants, indicating free energy was released and that the reaction should be spontaneous. You'll also notice that the energy barrier, this peak that has to be overcome, or what we call the activation energy, is extremely high, which is what's preventing a process like diamond changing to graphite from actually happening. Reactions like this that have a negative delta G are said to be thermodynamically favorable, but if they have an extremely high activation energy are kinetically unfavorable. A nice series of summary statements to describe this can be found below. High activation energies result in a reaction that's very hard to start or very, very slow. This is called being kinetically unfavorable. That's our main idea for this video, so make sure you pause and take a minute to write that down. That concludes this video on why some spontaneous reactions don't actually happen on their own. Thanks for watching.